In the previous episode, Terry Brown, a lifelong and proud Michigander, founded a new community on the Michigan side of Nicolay Bay. He wants this city to be a tourist destination to rival or even best Marquette Island. And to do that, he has worked to attract tourism operators to open up shop in the community. One of the first people to show interest in the community was Chuck King. Chuckles, as he insists on being called, runs Chuckles Crazy Critter Carnival, a combined zoo and amusement park just north of Detroit. He has been looking to branch out and open up a second location so he can share his love of animals, amusement park rides, and the combination of the two, his piggy ride, with the world. Chuckles quickly reaches an agreement with Terry on a significant chunk of land just off the interstate, but only after insisting that he's also able to purchase land directly adjacent to the bus terminal too. This land was supposed to be reserved for a harbor, but Terry's going to be forced to change his plans. In this episode, we're going to build a fantastic amusement park and zoo. We're going to make sure that they're combined in a way that feels natural, blending the assets together using a variety of mods that we already have available to us. We'll also spend some time fixing things that you pointed out in the comments of episode 19, and we'll do so throughout the build as we wait for the park to upgrade, so stay tuned so you don't miss any of the fixes. And if you like amusement parks, hit the like button. And if you prefer zoos, hit the like button for that too, and let me know which one you prefer with an emoji in the comments for the sake of engagement. Without any further ado, let's jump right in. Hello, welcome back to City Platter Plays, where we are building the Michigan side of Nicolay Bay, and we are going to have a name for this side in just a minute. But I want to talk a little bit about what we're going to do today, because I'm really excited for this one. We're going to accomplish a lot. We're going to come through here and build an absolutely massive combined amusement park and zoo. And this is something I haven't really done before, but I think that with the mods we have available, we can make these really blend together well and we'll make something really, really special. But before we do that, I want to name this city and we need to thank Zoe Zebra for the coming up with the name. We're going to name this Superior Michigan as a way to trick people into staying in Michigan if they were planning a trip to Superior. I absolutely love that. Let's do it. And there we are, Superior Michigan. The very first thing that we're going to need to do here is really examine our terrain and discuss our strategy because we're going to have to make some interesting modifications to make this work. We're going to need to get across here. So we're going to need to really consider how we do that. The way that I think we're going to probably accomplish that is to bridge this and then have a path going underneath it. And then the other consideration is we're going to need to remove some soil and level this. That's one of the things that's challenging about amusement parks generally is that all of the assets self level. So we're going to need to take some liberties here. So we're going to continue to disrespect the topography over here in Superior, Superior, Michigan, <laughs> and it's going to be an interesting one. So let's start out with that. I'm going to flatten this area out and I'm actually going to remove all the trees too. And now we're going to add in our bridge through here because this is kind of the other linchpin to what we're doing. Okay, and I'm not 100% sure if I want this all to be a bridge yet or not, but this will be where we start. Now, Chuckles has a couple of options here. He could orient his park towards the city and try to take advantage of the tourism that the city presents, or he could do what he's going to do, which is orient his park towards the highway. He's kind of dismissing the city as an afterthought, a place where maybe you go to stay after you visit his park. As a result, we're going to add the main entry point off directly off from the highway here. So we're going to build one of our parking lots. And then I know I want an entryway coming from the city as well. So now we've got this. I'm going to go ahead and add in our parking. I have no idea what the utilization of this is going to be like, but I think that Chuckles, especially coming from Detroit, is going to think about the parking standards that he has there and expect to have tons of parking. Very good, very good. So there's gonna be that one significant challenge in this build, and that is that we haven't unlocked any of the buildings for either the amusement park or zoo. Now the consequence for us is gonna be that we have to have two parks. We'll place our amusement park first, We'll, we'll try something to get this to be centered. So what I think we're going to do is grab the amusement park ground tiles and I'm just going to use prop line tool. And basically what I've done here is I've added these tiles across 
to bring the feel of the amusement park out to the parking lot. This also helps us because we can count these and there's 10 of these. So if we back it up five, this right here is where we need to line up our gate to be perfectly in the center. And we'll add our taxi stand right away so we don't forget about it. And look at that. Perfect. The only thing we're going to change is I'm going to get a little crazy about this. Perfectly centered. And I'm going to remove the light here. So I'm using picker to select the road. We'll go to none. And then I will just upgrade this. And here I'm turning collision off so I don't ruin my parking lot. But I'm doing the exact same thing. I'm getting rid of the lights here. And then I'll use node controller to slide these over. Now the parking lot looks perfect. There's one thing before we get moving on our park that I want to think about, and that is this area right here and some of the areas surrounding. I think that we've got to do something with the terrain. We're going to add a key wall, which I think is going to make this feel a little bit polished compared to the way it looks right now. I want to snap this to the highway. And then I care about this road. I don't want to go all the way over because we're going to have an entryway into this area. I'm guessing from this road, this is kind of the main local road coming through here. And so we'll have our gate right here, which means that we need to slope up to this area. And then hit this up with node controller because I want this to be a very sharp angle. That is nice. And now we just need to come in and get this to the appropriate level. So go into move it, control M, and the appropriate level is actually probably going to be the interstate. And I was playing around a bit back here. We're going to need to adjust this side a bit. And here, I think we'll just want to drop this down, perhaps to road level. So I'm just going to grab this one, alt this over, control H this to the highway, control H this one to the road. And that's too low. We'll just bump it up a little bit and move it. There we go. That is a work of art right there. I love that. I love that. So I want to slope this road. So we're going to slope basically from here. If it'll let me to here, <laughs> it doesn't seem like it's happy. Yeah, we got a 9% grade there. We'll just drop that down. Now I want to slope this down. So we're going to grab our height from up here and just slope this down to about here. So we'll add our side gate right here. Use move it to perfectly center this on this road. The one thing I know I want to do right off the bat, just looking at these is we've got these parking stalls here. I don't want any of that. Let's take our probability down to zero and then hit apply. And then we'll do the exact same thing over here. There's a couple of different parking stalls with this associated with this though. So we'll have to do it a few times. Very good. Now I want to start laying out the pedestrian network through here. So I'm going to grab just some normal amusement park paths and we're going to send this right up through here and we want to access up this way. I almost like the idea of a parallel connection through here, kind of a two track pedestrian connection. This will be the start of our park and I'm just going to lay out the couple of things that we have available to us. We don't have much. We've got the plaza. And I might try to fit that right in the center here, which is something that we can do with Move It, which is awesome. This is one of the reasons why I think if I were to have one mod incorporated into the vanilla gameplay, especially now that we know that City Skylines 2 is coming out, it might be this one. So the way that I'm going to accomplish this is to just overlay this right on top and try to center it nicely. There we go. So I added this path through the center specifically so that people would walk through. They'll, they're going to unfortunately also walk through the center of this. And we've got some decorations here that I don't love. So using find it, you can get your amusement paths without props. So in this particular instance, that's going to help us out. Now we've got to place a couple more things that we have access to, like we have this amusement park cafe, souvenir shop, and restrooms. And what I'm thinking is these are the sorts of things you might see right off the main gate. So we'll end, send these right back. Souvenir shop on the way out the door, some restrooms, maybe even two sets right here. And then we'll have a couple of cafes here as well. One's probably good enough. On the other side, I want to think about some of our game stations. So we have a game booth 
and we also have a carousel available to us. Let's just extend this out and I want to make a little game section here. So let's go ahead and use this prop again. And it was control seeing this to copy it. So we have more than one available to us. We may need to adjust these. And now I'm going to use the surface painter to clean up a bit of this so we can see that there's concrete in the center and just adding that little bit in really improves the aesthetic of this. And then we have our ploppable concrete. So we'll just add that right along the edge just to straighten out the edge. We just get a nice edge. It just looks clean then. And what I'm thinking is we'll have a children's area over here. So I want to extend this out. Maybe we'll just turn it right here. There we go. And I'm going to send this down this way. And here's where we'll start our children's amusement park ride area. And truthfully, we could have more than one. We'll have to see where the, where the park takes us. Let's get some water and power here so we can start to see this thing in action and start getting some visitors to this area. For power, I think I'm going to temporarily add in one of these transformers and we'll bridge this at some point anyway down the line. And we have power and we have taxis queuing up here. I'm going to add in a second park right here. And I'm going to pull this over here as well. So we're taking over the harbor land and we will get rid of our harbor. So definitely disappointing, but we just have to adjust our plans. Sometimes plans change and it's totally fine. And then the other thing I want to think about off the bat is a shuttle service. Now, this might sound like I'm making a bus route, but we won't. We won't. We don't make bus routes here. We do have shuttles in between our attractions and our bus terminal, though. And then we'll take that new route and we will rename it. So they're calling it the downtown local. We will call this Chuckles Shuttle and we will use our minibus. So that definitely changes the feel. And while we're on this note, why don't we rename this? So there we go. They have the same name. One just happens to say zoo. <laughs> so we should start seeing some people rolling through here, coming up and visiting our lovely little area. Since we have this Chirper Land theme going on, I thought it might be fun to add in our Chirper Balloon Tour. Seems like it would fit well here and we should be able to work it right into this location. Beautiful. I'm going to pull this up. <laughs> there we go. We get our Chirper Balloon right off the bat. Pull this right here and then again alt b into bob we got to get rid of that parking and i do want to see where we are at in terms of our policies here we've got no policies enabled we've got eight visitors we have plenty of entertainment we're going to make this a main park have an advertisement campaign we're going to celebrate we're going to have night tours and we're going to have even more fun that's perfect and we're going to attract people here like crazy and even crank up the speed a bit to get even more people here i want to say that we had a park over here set to main park yeah, yeah, we're going to basically take everything down. And I've heard a rumor that if you take this and you increase the price, you increase the desirability of the park. So we're going to test that. We'll just make this super expensive and see if we start attracting crazy amounts of people. If we aren't attracting people, I'll just take the price and drop it way, way down. I think there's something to this. It's a weird game mechanic. We'll just crank it to the top and see. We should also probably increase the maintenance. I think that Chuckles would want that, but... Uh, We'll do that down the line. Now I want to focus on the zoo. And this is going to be the area that we're focusing on. Look at all those cars parked on the road. That, that's not going to work. Not, not for me. We'll fix that down the line though. We'll add in our zoo main gate, but I want to use a small one. And we'll place that right here, right on the edge. And we've got some critters, some crazy critters. We'll place those right over here and use move it. Just spin this around a bit. Bob to remove our parking stalls. And then the other interesting thing I want to do here. So I want to unlock this path. I want this to feel like it is a part of the same complex. So the way that we're going to accomplish that is to come into our network multi-tool and unlock this path segment here. Then we'll go into our amusement park paths and I'm, I'm going to actually look for the propolis version and we'll upgrade this and then we'll have to lock it again. Don't forget to lock it. It can break things. The other thing I'm noticing is that we've got our own unique tile here. I don't like that. So we'll go into Bob. We have zoo ground tiles 
and it's amusement park tiles. We'll place that right here. And then we've also got some fences. So I've just unlocked these fence pieces because I want to use the same fence throughout and we'll use our amusement park fence. And then again, we'll lock these. And I don't think I can change the back. Yeah, it's part of the defined prop. So it just kind of is what it is. So there we go. We've made the zoo feel like it is part of the amusement park. I really dig it. Now we've got to pull this area up through here and find a way to end our double path. And temporarily, I'm going to control H that down and play with fire. <laughs> you see the water just starting to come in. That's that's what that's going to be the worry the entire time. And now we're into our zoo. So I want to start thinking about the assets in the zoo. And the first one I think about is the same one that we used in our amusement park. And that's this plaza. So I'm going to place it here and then I'll spin it around. And I want to drop this down. Control H this right to this path level. And we can get folks walking through this. I'm going to pause this <laughs> because I'm about to make all sorts of madness happen. So I'm going to come through here at a node right here. And the main purpose for this node is just to ensure that it doesn't conflict with the park itself. So I can control H this node down to the park. And now you can't see this paver path through there. And then we can actually slope up from here. This one I'll pull out. Just a bit. Now you can see we've got water spilling in through here. Not the end of the world. We can get this fixed. And I'm just going to add a little bit of a dam here, a land dam. And we're going to key wall this anyway. And everything here is going to change. And we're going to establish that path that goes over here right off the bat. Now, I'm not 100% sure how we're going to get this up here just yet. And it made me think we've got a couple of different exhibits available to us right now. We should start to think about where these go because it could really change the layout that we're going with. So the first one I'm going to look at is the moose and reindeer enclosure. I'm pretty sure this is the biggest one and I'm just going to place a couple of these. So we've got our bird house, our moose and reindeer enclosure and our antelope enclosure. And I think we're going to adjust this one first. So I'm going to spin this around and I'm going to do my best to line this up with this path here. And then I'm going to delete this path. So I want to use the enclosure as a portion of this path to the main gate. So again, I will convert this to look like our amusement park paths using the network multi tool. And then we'll incorporate this into our main route. It might be nice to have another entry point here. And because this is unlocked, I think I might be able to add one. In fact, I don't love the way that looks. And then we just have to remember to lock these back up. And you can tell it's unlocked when it's yellow. Green is good. Yellow is proceed with caution. <laughs> there we go. Now we've got to get our birdhouse in place. We're going to send this right over here and control H this right down to here. And then I'm, I'm kind of going back and forth about the best way to address this. I think we need to bridge this and then I'm going to get this fairly tight to this. I think we are going to elevate this a bit and then I want to move this path. It's in the wrong place. And I think that uh, the slope is spread out enough that it, it should be accessible as well. So feeling good about that. Don't feel so good about the palm trees. Not sure what the deal is with that, but we've been having that problem in this build for a little while and we'll pretend that that is a temperate plant. It looks nice. And then we'll add in a bit of landscaping along the side as well. And the whole idea here is when you're inside of the birdhouse, that's what you see. And then we also have this antelope enclosure. And here's where things get wacky. So we have these separated pretty nicely, but then we have our antelope enclosure over here. I'm going to spin this around. And we'll just send this right up here. So it's the first thing that you see when you come to the park. Oh, I love that. That is great. So now we need to look at both parks and see what we need to get to the next level. And we're going to get do the exact same thing policy wise over here. We'll have animal ethics. So this will increase the entertainment effect of the zoo by 20% and cost more per building. I'm not really worried about that advertisement campaign main park. So these are both main parks and it's kind of rude to the animals to have uh, the celebrate. But night tours, we can we can do the zoo at night. I've done that. It's very fun. So there we go. We have 10 visitors. <laughs> That's not so good. 
And over here, we have 240. I'm gonna speed this thing up. We're just gonna crank it. So while we wait for these to level up, why don't we address some of your feedback? Queen pointed out that I never connected this bike bridge. And you can see it's a little bit off. And I'm gonna go on to move it and we're gonna see, yeah, we've got two separate nodes here. I can actually completely remove this. I'll just select this, make this connection, and I can even get rid of that extra node, but I'll just use it to fix things up. And it looks like garbage. I don't know why. In fact, maybe the solution is actually to force that segment to be a bridge as well. Yeah, we'll go with it. It's not my ideal solution, but it's going to do the trick. So thank you so much, Keem, for the lovely idea. I think that that was a good fix to make. Next up, Cole Brunel had an absolutely epic idea. The idea was to have welcome signs on both sides of the bridge welcoming people into the states that they're entering. Now, that is something that I looked for on the shop, at least for the Michigan side. But what I was able to find was the Federation's flags. So you have to use Find It 2 for this, but we've got these beautiful Michigan flags. And check these out. Absolutely lovely. Love it. And then on the other side, we will grab our superior flag and do the exact same thing. And maybe as a sign of their superiority. We'll go with an even taller flag because we have it available to us. Those are 60 meters tall, or 60 feet tall. The other ones were 30. I love it. I want to grab City Hall over here, though. This is a building that you should not be able to clone. It's a unique building. Ooh, I don't know what has happened here, but I do not like it. I'm going to reset some of these buildings. The height of realism. I should have probably checked to see why they abandoned. This one, maybe I can see. Too much garbage. All right, that's concerning. And I don't see any garbage issues now. So that must have been an issue in the past that has been resolved. My guess is, yeah, I emptied this. That was a long time ago. <laughs> and I'll just make, I'll just add another incinerator kind of as a just in case to make sure that we don't have that issue again and reset this building over here. Okay, now I do want to copy this. So we're just going to grab this building right here. And I wonder if I can just control C it. I can. <laughs> that is awesome. There we go. Everyone loves that. Why wouldn't they? I love it too. So we are going to find a spot downtown for this. And I think we just need to eliminate some of these homes down here. Why are you abandoning? Why are you abandoning? Not enough workers. As I get rid of some residential. <laughs> Perfect. So I'll just move this over here using move it. And I just wanted to make sure that I unzoned this before I got wild and placed this thing down here. And then I'll adjust the height to line up right here. Perfect. There we go. There we go. People love parking here. It's <laughs> just a place to park. Uh, I think that with all the parking, we've got to get rid of some of this on-street parking. So I'm going to add in some grassy terraces in a few locations. Editor Phil here. We're actually going to basically put grassy terraces or tree-lined streets everywhere. This street right here, we should probably keep the parking. It's a main street. A lot of times, though, business owners will see this parking as their lifeline, even if it's not. <laughs> but uh, it's something that we should obviously be very thoughtful about in this location. There we go. And I'm going to go up and down with this road and basically eliminate some of the parking on the streets that already have a whole bunch of parking available. Even with all of that, we now have about a dozen cars in the parking lot, but we saw a whole bunch of people get off our minibus to go walk in. So, we can uh, we, we know that people are getting here, so we could be happy with that. Oh, and we've leveled up and I want to see. So we've got this one. We are plenty of entertainment. We're starting to make our way to the next level over here. We're almost there as well. So let's continue to add on to our parks. And it looks like we have unlocked the piggy train and the rotating teacups. We're going to add in our piggy train and our rotating key uh, tea, <laughs> teacups. We're going to go hard on them. I think that we can have a number of these. Yeah, there we go. There we go. And that sound was the sound of our zoo leveling up. We now have our bison enclosure and our insect, amphibian, and reptile house. 
So let's see how big the bison enclosure is. It's pretty big. That is pretty big. I think we might actually try to have this on this side. And for our insect and amphibian house, why don't we, I love this building. So why don't we give this some prominence up here on this hill? Love that. Over here, we've got to make some connections as well. Perfect. And we will unlock this. And this looks good. Oh my goodness. Look at that. You can upgrade these and it doesn't matter at all. It's perfectly fine. The other thing that we missed out on over here besides our water, some uh, you know, restrooms or something of that nature. We didn't add any of those. We've got the souvenir shop as well, right on the way out the door. Same thing with the cafe. Now for all of these, we're going to bob in and replace the ground tiles. Look at that. Look at that. That is awesome. And you know, this might not be your aesthetic preference, <laughs> but I think that Chuckles likes it. It feels wacky. So now we're back to the waiting game and it's a good time to add in a few more things. So I want to go back to the city hall. I didn't add the flag there yet and we'll add one right up front. Yeah, that is nice. Now I want to move on to this right here. And there were a number of comments. Now there are two that I want to highlight that deal with the toll booth and this interchange. One is from Fitz Walker who says that the reason why there's hesitancy leaving the toll booth is actually the speed limit. And that leads into what Sam Watson said. Sam says that the interchange is actually not as crazy as it seems. It was a cheap solution to a highway coming through and it was never upgraded. The speed limit is not 75 on the interstate through here in Mackinac City, which is why this works. So it drops to 45 miles per hour. And because that's, I mean, that in some cities is arterial speed. I think it's wrong, but you see that in some cases. So if the interstate was at that speed, I think it actually makes some sense. I'm going to drop this down to 45 miles per hour. And then we'll take our ramps and drop them down to 30. There we go. I think that that's good. So we kind of ramp up our speeds and right over here, yeah, it's 45, 45 into here. And I believe it's 45 all the way across the bridge too, which I think is fair. And now it's at least safer. So thank you so much, Fitzwalker and Sam for the feedback. Absolutely wonderful. And this leads into feedback that Nathan Creek gave. Nathan didn't like that if you were to enter the highway and not know where you're going, you get trapped. So you have to go across the bridge. Now that is the way it is in Mackinac City and we're not gonna change it. But one of the things that this made me think about was emergency responders. So if they get trapped, they are forced to go all the way across and there is no turnaround. So this is something that I want to fix. What we're going to do is add in a turnaround. And then we're going to restrict our movements to just the emergency responders and do a little bit of intersection marking work. And there we go. It's not perfect by any means, but it will do the trick. We have one more thing to do before we just have to wait. And that is something that Quan mentioned. Quan says, I see what you were going for with the hotels, Phil, but I'm going to be honest. Those are motels are hideous in their current state. Make them line up more or at least landscape around them. So <laughs> I know these didn't turn out exactly as I was anticipating that they would, but I kind of want them to be hideous. That's kind of the goal here. There are unintended consequences sometimes from not thinking through a zoning code. And that is what happened here. We didn't think through this. And as a result, we got the exact same hotel spammed through here. That said, we will mix it up a little bit. I will, uh, I, I will relent and I'll add in some of these other hotel oasises. So we actually have more hotel space now, which is kind of nice. But again, this is not an absolutely splendid layout. It, uh, it does the trick though, in my opinion. We're gonna let this run for a minute and we'll be right back. And I just realized something. We have way more people going to the zoo and the price is lower. That makes me wonder, maybe we just swap these and see if this balances out. 
So I'm gonna lower the price here down to 12 and over here we'll raise it up to 24 and see if that balances us out. I'm very curious to see if this actually does the trick because we've almost got to the next level, 2,500 uh, visitors at the zoo. Over here, we are not even close. So no one's visiting the carnival. And I'm not sure if that is, I mean, look at the entertainment levels even higher at the carnival and there are two entry points. So I don't know if that is the price. To me, that would make sense, but we will see. The other thing I want to do is think about that maintenance building. So we're gonna add a park maintenance building way out here. And what I'm thinking that we're gonna do is carry this road out here. I don't know that it's the height of realism, but I think it's fine. Collisions off, which is why we're seeing some of our trees poking on through. So I'm gonna convert this to a highway and kind of orient this towards the end of the map. Looking very good. We did that so that we could connect this up to here and have a nice, easy path to get to our park. And then we'll add a rural power line to connect these up. Water pipe is already there, so we shouldn't have to worry about that. We are good to go. I want to restrict this again, prefer local district. And we'll add this, we'll add chuckles to both of these and superior. And we have leveled up at our zoo, which makes me want to see how are things going. I don't know that I can see a compelling difference just yet. So we'll just need to keep an eye on that. This was already close to leveling up. Let's see what we got available to us now. We've got our flamingo enclosure, our elephant enclosure, and our sea life enclosure. I'm gonna place this here. Our flamingo enclosure, I'm gonna probably place somewhere over, maybe right here actually. And then for the elephant enclosure, this is a large one. We'll put that over here as well. I'm gonna grab this, and this is where move it is just so clutch. Over here, we've got our flamingos. Just grab this and connect up. And then again, unlock and convert our roads. And we're looking good. We're looking really, really good. Again, with the palm trees, though. And we can young lindenize that. And look at how nice that looks. We've got our young lindens, and they are perfect in this location. Love it. And our last thing that we want to work in over here, and we're going to keep our contours on, is our elephant enclosure. So I'm thinking that we are going to actually keep this one elevated to keep our water out because of the size of this. And this will be a few meters higher than this. So we've kind of worked up to this level. There we go. So uh, hopefully you can see the vision here, but the idea is that this continues to tear us up. And I'm gonna use a key wall now to, to make this look a little bit nicer. I don't know if you caught that in my voice, but that was the sound of self-doubt. I wasn't really sure about what I was doing. I started to feel like I was going astray, and I was. So I'm going to speed through this because we're going to redo it at the end of the episode, and we're going to make it look a ton better. So now it wraps around, and that is looking good. We're going to add in some more key walls. I don't think we're done with these. And the key walls that I want to use are going to be some of our custom content creator pack key walls. Let's get rid of some of this sand now because we've got a lot of sand through here. And as I look at this, I wonder, this is a, a pretty old asset. Let's add in some of these newer grass tufts so that it looks like they could be eating from there. I love that. And then we'll young lindenize this as well. We're no longer tropical. Looks good. Now I want to look at this and I had a very specific idea for this and I don't think we're quite there yet. So I'm going to try something. I'm going to raise this up. And we're gonna raise all of this stuff to that level. So maybe you can see a little bit of the vision now. But what I'm thinking is we have this here, we got some pretty crazy contours, but we can have some connections through here to get back to the key wall. And you can have either this walk, this utilitarian walk to the places you need to go, or you can have this nice walk along the sea, your choice. And there you go. Now you can walk from this path here directly onto the key wall. We'll add a couple more key connections through here. Terrible pun. Terrible pun. <laughs> 
The one weird thing about these now uh, that I, I've got to point out is you see how we have this little protrusion? That is actually this. So that we've either got to deal with that a bit and just accept that there's going to be a bit of imperfection or you can get super crazy about it and, and, and back this out so it's just the right spot. I'm just going to live with a bit of it and then we will flatten things out as best we can. At this point, I want to see what we need for each of these and then we're just going to let it go and see if our carnival is able to catch up. And it looks like it is making some really good progress. So I don't know that that whole hypothesis about price was right because it seems as though the attendance here is slipping now that the price has improved over here and the maintenance over here even stinks, which makes me wonder if I didn't restrict this uh, correctly. It's like we're good. I don't know what's going on there. But either way, we're seeing that even this poorly maintained park is doing considerably better in terms of attracting visitors now that we have lowered the price than is the zoo, even though the zoo has much better access. So we're going to let this go for a minute and see if we level up. And we have now hit the next level in our amusement parks. So let's see what we've unlocked. We now have this swinging boat, the House of Horrors, and our bumper cars. So I think that we're going to take the swinging boat and do something different with it. Maybe this is our first amusement park asset that goes over here. I like that a ton. So there's our swinging boat right along here. And then we've got our House of Horrors, which is always such a weird asset. <laughs> we're going to place it here temporarily. And I think what we're going to do is hold down Alt, spin this around and leave it at the end of this. I guess we could terrify the children before they go to the bathroom. It's a way to ensure that they are, are able to go. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> we'll be just at the end of this. Yeah, that's going to work out all right for us. I like that. And then the last thing we got is our bumper cars. And I've been thinking a little bit about this area, and I, I think we need to give it some more thought. I don't know why I stopped so far before we got to our retaining wall. Well, let's not. And then I just added a couple of things over here. So we've got our bumper cars, and I want to find a way to make this look nice. I think we'll like pull this out. We could continue this through here, but I think we want to have landscaping to fill in some of this stuff. And the other thing that we haven't really done over here is add in any of our props. So I'm just going to go ahead and add in a couple of benches. That's kind of what I was thinking through here is you could come if you're a parent and sit down while your kids play games. There we go. And we can finish this off with just a bit of landscaping. I'm going to go with some apples to honor the history of this area generally. So now when we take a look at this, you can clearly see that our amusement park is catching up to our zoo. In fact, we're just a couple hundred people behind before our zoo is passed. So I'm wondering, you know, I know that we don't have unlimited money. In fact, we've been burning money this entire episode. Let's burn it even faster. And what we're going to do is just turn the price of these down to nothing. And I want to get as many people pumping through here as possible. Come in here and enjoy your free carnival while we burn money and lose it rapidly. After a bit of patience, we've hit the next level for the zoo. And this is where the entertainment level is going to start to hit us. So we are low on that, but we are not too far off from where we need to be. So let's see what we've unlocked this time around. And it looks like we have a giraffe enclosure and a monkey palace. Now, I've, I've done a couple of things that I want to point out. I rearranged this a little bit. I wanted this to feel symmetrical and nice. And I think I've mostly accomplished that. Basically, I took the piggy train, moved it over here, and then got this to line up nicely. So it looks a lot better. And that allowed me to, to make better use of some of these uh, assets as well. So now everything's squared up, looks good. And I think we might do something similar over here. I, something is leaving me feeling a bit unsettled about this area. So we will see. Once we start placing these, that could be the, the end game. Because one of the things I want to do is place our monkey palace right here. And I don't think I left myself enough space. So we're going to call a bit of a mulligan. I know I want to put that right there. And for the giraffe enclosure, I think we're going to leave that somewhere over here as well, perhaps in this location. 
All right, it's finally time to fix this thing. I, I think we're going to go big. I went a little bit more ham on that than I intended to. <laughs> so we'll need to we'll need to rebuild some of our key walls and whatnot, but that's okay. Main point here is that I wanted to reorient where our opening to this enclosure was and move it over here. So what that's going to allow us to do is potentially instead of having a path that goes all the way around here, we'll incline up this way and then perhaps use our key wall as our method for walking over here. I want to make better use of those key walls. Okay, so here I'm going to grab this key wall again and we'll run that back here. I'm going to turn on all of our snap twos this time around and we'll line this up nicely right here. So the nice thing about this is that will give us the ability to have this key wall kind of extend into the into this side a little bit and add a natural terminus. And then I can control H this into place. And that just looks really good. This key wall is backwards here. So we'll need to reverse that. And hopefully no elephants were injured in the making of this <laughs> because I had to, to do a couple of things I wasn't necessarily proud of. Okay, so I really like that. I think that that's a much better layout for this area. And we have such a nice cliff texture that I can live with a bit of this. We can always landscape in front of it if it bothers us too much. But now you've got the ramps coming up the side here. And we can spread it out over this by adding a node right here. So that is pretty good. Yeah, and I, I love that. You can see that they already have a retaining wall built into this asset. I wish that that was like that in more assets. Linden eyes and we're good. And I want to add a retaining wall behind this as well. I want to add another key wall to act as a retaining wall back here. And I think that that is going to really take this up to the next level. Problem is we've got that other key wall back there already. All right, it took a while. There was a lot of finagling and playing, but I think I got this to look pretty good. Obviously landscaping is gonna be needed to really clean this up and take it to the next level, but it's like that anytime you do something that is this intricate. So there's a lot of different heights here, a lot of different things going on, but I, I'm really digging it. We've got to work on this still. We're gonna do that. That's This is gonna be an easy one. <laughs> All right, that is looking pretty darn good as well. So that's our giraffe enclosure. I think we've only really got one more left in here. The rhino enclosure and the lion enclosure. I don't know if we're going to have room for those. We'll have to see. We're getting pretty packed. And we've also leveled up at our amusement park. So we should see what we have there as well. And we've got our drop tower ride and our pendulum ride. Now for the pendulum ride, I'm thinking that maybe we just stick this on this side. And for the drop tower, kind of this opposite end. But for both of them, because we have move it available, I think we could kick this up to the next level. The way that we do that is just we'll back it out a little ways. And then I want to grab these apple trees and again, run them along here. And I'm just going to run a bit of landscaping along here. The idea here being that when you're inside, the last thing you want to do is see all of this traffic. And then on the outside here, we're going to run fencing and then landscaping. The landscaping, actually we'll do the landscaping first. The landscaping is going to be to prevent the visual impact of this. Even if these are rentals, which they look like they would be. Uh, the thing is, you wouldn't want to be able to see all the lights you might see here at night. Yeah, it's, it's not too bad when you have all that landscaping there. So that's the whole reason why you put it there to prevent being able to see that. 
And then I'm going to put some up here as well for the sake of the park. But because it's for the sake of the park, we're going to separate the trees considerably more. It's not a huge deal if a little bit of sights of the highway get through to the park. And now I'm going to add a bit of fencing. We spent some time early on adjusting the fencing of the zoo, so we might as well get that in place. We're going to use our amusement park fence. We'll use it all the way around here. All right, so I have fenced all the way around here, both sides of the road. So we are getting very close to our next level. So I think that we are going to take a beat and let this place level up. All right, and we finally hit level five on our zoo, which means we've unlocked our last few exhibits. What we're going to do now is just crank up <laughs> the amount that this costs to try to balance our budget. We've been losing money all day. And we are going to not make this the main park. No more animal, no more advertisement campaign. And we'll burn the rest of the city down. I'm hoping that changing these policies gets more people to come over here and visit this place. And look at that. We're finally making money here. All we had to do is charge people all of the money. <laughs> all right. So we've unlocked our rhino enclosure and our lion enclosure. I don't know how big these are. But I'm going to guess that it's going to be a challenge to fit both of these in and we just may not do it. Maybe leave in the comments. Do you think that I should try to work these in or sometimes is it OK to uh, to leave a couple things out? What I really want at this point, I want to redo this a little bit. I'm trying to figure out the best way to make this fit in there. And what I'm thinking we're going to do is get rid of this and reorient this a bit because I want to fit the roller coaster right here. And I want a Ferris wheel right here. And then I think that we have uh, reached the point that, that that I've hoped that this would get to. So while we're waiting for this to fill in, I'm going to build us a little bit of a pad for the roller coaster. And we're going to loop this back around and find a nice way to end this. We'll probably have to move our fence just a bit. So I often talk about why it's so important to relock your assets that have built in networks. And here is why. Check out what happens in a second. Now, this is an interesting problem right here. You see that it says it's not on a road or it's not connected. I think I might have broken it. So I tried to make a connection midway through and I think I didn't have all the segments locked. I might need to start fresh with this one. Unfortunately, not what I wanted to do. I think the other consideration might be that it's unhappy that I place this directly on this. I'm going to spin this around and see if that helps. So the only way that I can seem to get the giraffe enclosure to be happy is to move it. I think the key wall actually might be what is causing the conflict, which is no big deal. We will just reorient this around and I think we can make this work. So that might actually give us one more of our enclosures. All right, that took a little bit of work, but it wasn't too bad. And I think the result is that it looks pretty good. And that sound is the sound of our leveling up over here, which means that we can finish this. So as I mentioned, the goal is to put the roller coaster right here. Let's go ahead and do that. And I gave us way too much space. So that's not a bad thing because we have a couple more exhibits to fit in. I kind of give this some space and then we'll see if we can fit our rhino enclosure. Yeah, I think that should be. Well, it's a little bit big. Our lion enclosure is fine, though. So we'll add the lion enclosure instead. And I'm going to try to get real tricky with this one. What I'm going to try to do is unlock and remove some of these roads. Oh, that worked out really, really well. And it's just a matter of making our last couple of connections now. Uh That is looking good, and we're going to get our Ferris wheel in here. I don't love how lumpy and bumpy and crazy this is. 
I also don't know how much I can do to address 100% of that without breaking everything. And sometimes you've got to live with a little bit of imperfection. This is going to bug me. That's probably as good as I, I get it. So we're just going to add a little bit of landscaping and try to forgive ourselves for the state that we've left this in. But in general, I think this place looks pretty awesome. I'm pretty excited about the way that it turned out. Let's add a little bit of landscaping and we'll be right back. All right, and I think that we're looking pretty good. We got to slow things down. We got to adjust our policies over here so that we are no longer a free park. We're making money and we'll set main park to both of these two because they are. They're very important. And before we have our city tour, I think there's one more thing that we've got to do. And I think you can see it as well as I can. We forgot to put in our lights here. So I took it to nighttime and let's add in some lights. So I'm trying the Japanese content creator pack lights. It seems like they'll do really well. Add one each of these rows. And again, the whole point is we want to make sure that there's no spot in the parking lot where it's dark. And you will see this place from space. <laughs> All right, that is well illuminated. I think this is the perfect time to take inventory of what we've done and have a brief city tour. All right, and man, this has been a really fun build for me. I really hope that you've enjoyed this. I think that we made Chuckles proud today. His second location is even more fantastic than his first one, and it's really going to take this whole little city of Superior, Michigan to the next level. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I noticed this over here, and you know what? <laughs> That's the perfect place to leave it. I think that we're going to leave it here. I hope that you've enjoyed this one. <laughs> If you did, and if you want to roast some marshmallows, hit the like button. If you are not subscribed to the channel, please consider doing so. And I really can't wait to see you in the next one. Thank you so much for joining me today. It's been a pleasure. It is a privilege. Take care. Bye-bye.